I would like to thank you so much for being with us today and with all the medical and health issues that we had the last few days. Thank God you're I was playing. just afraid. I was afraid not to be able, but it was not too, too much important. And if today everything is perfect. We are glad that you could make it today with us. And uh, of course, uh, you don't need any introduction. This is the legendary John Beard Bernard. And you can uh, start. Your okay, thank you. Uh, thank uh, you. Dear, dear colleagues, uh, I really want to, to thank my friend Dr. Vassem for this so nice uh, proposal to, to share with you some, uh, some time and, and, and reflection. Uh, I want to apologize for a lot of lot of things. First, for my Frenglish. Second, from possible technical problem because I'm not really trained with such a presentation system. It seems to work correctly, but I'm every time afraid because personally I have no any <laughs> any enough knowledge to control any, any problem. So I, I, I really hope and expect it will be it will be correct uh, for you. And also, I would like to uh, share with you some reflection. And uh, I want to give you an information. I do not want to give you uh, any lecture. Uh, I just want to, to share with you some reflection, analysis, and uh, perhaps proposal, and I know and it's why I really want to, to, to thank my, my friend Dr. Lassen for this very nice opportunity, because I know that what I explain, what I show, is very, very frequently quite different from what you are trained to, to hear, to see, or to do. And uh, you have to consider it's not just today I decide, yes, I will give them something new. No, it's not. It's just, I would like to share with you something which is a long, long, long time of experience, analysis, a try to increase knowledge, clinical research, uh, fundamental research, to try to, to go forward in, in a very, very fascinating uh, topic, which is the, the, the use of, of implant. And one part of this, is directly in related my 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 personal story. So uh, you know some is picture from Paris. I continue to show because it's my original uh, city, and I trained in Paris long, long, long time ago for medical training and later a specialization for oral and maxillofacial surgery. But soon I was uh, I was trained. I moved to Switzerland, and you know it's quite different because Switzerland is a very small country. However, it's a very attractive country with very, very nice places. And something which is very nice because it's, as it is a small country, we are in, in small cities with a very nice relation between university and private dentists and colleagues everywhere. So I'm trained from, I arrived in Geneva it was in 1980, you know, it's more than 40 years now. And at this time, there was no uh, implant utilization uh, inside the University of Geneva, and it was very, very limited utilization uh, in, in most places in the world at this time. And you know, you see the picture down, it's the first group of uh, implantology we created in Geneva in uh, 1987. You know, it's 30 years now. So it's a long, long uh, time of period. And from this period, we had done quite original things. And it's really what I would like to, to, to share with you. And it's difficult to give a, a very precise uh, name to, to, to a topic or, or, or to a philosophy. But I try to, to, to find every word that corresponds to what I would like to to share with you and I just would like to open your mind to see okay is it possible to have interest for such things first I said it's advanced because why advanced because a lot a lot of things we have to look every day 
and who continue to be uh, teach every day and a lot of people and colleagues in the world do every day are quite old-fashioned things because it's exactly the model that was developed 30 years ago and now we have 30 years of knowledge of sense uh, new uh, knowledge so we could adapt our activity to a new fashion i I, I prefer to say advance because advance will continue. We cannot stop science. We cannot stop uh, new knowledge. So we, we have to be ready to, to, to continue to do an evolution and to change every day. So for me, I will like to explain to you, most of you, perhaps you are using implants, perhaps, perhaps you, you, want, you, you like to use implants, perhaps you are during training, a lot of things, every different situation can be. However, all of you could take advantage to look what could be advanced today in, if you compare with all fashion things. The second point for me, it's very, very important, is to try to explain to you that we have today the scientific evidence to promote minimally invasive and everybody would like to have minimally invasive but minimally invasive evidence based not minimally invasive i trust it's like this or i like to do like this or perhaps we can do like this i just will share with you today only evidence based topic so we have today the scientific knowledge to move to less invasive way to use implants and when i said invasive it's not only aggressive technique it is aggressive technique it is less risky technique also but it's less it's also shorter time and it's also less aggressive global treatment and it's also less cost for the treatment because actual cost of natural treatment is perhaps the most aggressive things we ask for patient and everywhere in the world, a lot of patients are not able to afford this very, very aggressive, invasive way to treat them, to propose them implant to a very, very too expensive and too complex way. I had medical. I had medical. You can see I'm an old medical doctor. And I'm afraid. I work in dentistry now, in, including in University of uh, Dental Medicine for 40 years. And I see a terrible evolution from dentistry. Normally, dentistry has to be a part of medical activity. In Switzerland, we have no medic dental faculty. We have medical faculty. And dentistry is inside medical faculty. And I was vice dean from the section of dental medicine, in, of dental medicine inside the faculty of medicine. And we continue to keep the medical spirit inside dentistry or to try to do it as the best. And probably you know, and I discuss a lot, and now on, on, on social networks uh, with young uh, colleagues from a lot of countries, with students from a lot of countries. And all of them complain about the commercial trends that is arriving today in dentistry. And it's not today. It's 40 years. I observe it for 40 years. The control from everything, the control from the education inside university, the control from any course, any congress, any publication is done today by industry. And so we have to take care of it because the, the interest is not the same. Before we were able to participate and to have partnership with industry, it's more and more difficult. So we have to take care of this. And it's why I would like to focus on how to continue to use uh, implant on a medical way. This is probably the most important part of the topic. You will move inside details, but the most important is inside this frame. And you said, I do not say medical implantology. I said medical implant utilization. What is an implant? We will discuss this point very soon. What is an implant? It's only an instrument. Why to do a domain with an instrument? I place implant 
but to be implantologist is crazy. To say that we are doing implantology, we are doing never implantology, we are using implants. To use an instrument is not to become something with the name of the, of the instrument. So the only name of its implantology and implantologist is crazy. I never agree to have a department of implantology in University of Geneva. I said my department is stomatology and oral surgery. And inside we use implants. But collect from prosthetic, use implant. Collect from perio, use implant. Why to change? Why to give the name of an instrument to a domain of medical dental medicine? We have too much domain actually. Why to continue to increase? And this gives something which is not true. There is no any need for implantology. There is no any need for implantologist. Any dentist has to be able to be implant conscient as it was perio conscient some years ago. So you know how we have to change things. We have to move from this. So I was a professor full time from uh, oral surgery and stomatology inside University of Geneva. I was also in charge of radiology and, and dental and maxillofacial radiology. And now I'm retired, but I continue to work. I'm the head from the uh, uh, clinical education and training from the Swiss uh, Academy of Ocean Integration. And I tried to create a group of uh, colleagues to, to become inside International Clinical College, the group to, to try to, to, to focus only on evidence-based presentation. And this is what I would like to do. So I discuss with you, what is an implant? An implant is nothing. It's just something to support a crown. So it's, it's just an instrument. It's just a tool. Has, has it an interest? Yes. Yes. Why? It's the most conservative approach for a, to replace any missing tooth. You can replace a tooth on any patient without to touch any other teeth. It's the best approach to replace a tooth, a missing tooth. Not to extract teeth to place implants, as we began to see. Dentistry has not to change because there is a new instrument that exists. We have to continue to follow rules of dentistry that we learned for centuries. And just to add a new instrument, it is a new way to do prosthodontic, nothing else. So it's necessary to know prosthetic, it's necessary to do quite, it's not surgery, implantology is not surgery. Most people are very proud to say that we do surgery, implantology is not surgery, it's, it's, it's basic dentistry. So does it work? It works perfectly. Is it new? No, it's not new. This presentation you can see here is the first publication from the Brandma Group in Sweden, in Göteborg that show to all the world, because it was published in a very well-known paper, which was the International Journal of Oral Surgery, which date? 1981, 40 years this year. Okay? So it's not a recent system. Everybody continue to want to be trained in implants. It's 40 years that, that exists. And this first publication indicated what? more than 90% of success of the prosthetic rehabilitation loaded on, on implants after 15 years. So from the first publication, the evidence from the high quality of result was demonstrated. We have 40 years of guarantee of efficacy. So we need to use implant every day. Why it works? It works by two people, one in Sweden, Professor Brandmark, one in Switzerland, Professor Schroeder, and it's why Switzerland took a very important part in development of implantology in the first years. They observed something which was strange at this time. It's just the direct contact between bone and an implant. But it's, it's a quite biological thing. It's the, the adverse foreign body reaction from bone. You know that foreign body reaction in soft tissue is encapsulation in, 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 uh, in connective tissue and inflammatory reaction. In bone, the reaction against a foreign body is just to produce bone around and to fix it, to separate from the rest of the body. It's a very natural biological reaction. It's not something very, very complex and, and very strange. And both of them 
from the early beginning thing as we can have a very strong anchorage of a, medic, a, a, a metallic part inside bone, they can use it to put on it prosthetic rehabilitation and crown. And they develop dental implant system. Brandmark moved to Nobel and was at the origin of the Nobel implant system. Schroeder moved to Strauman, which was also an industrial company in Switzerland, and they developed the ITI Strauman system. At the beginning, both of them were quite different. And we will discuss this difference because they are important. However, both of them show, yes, it works, and we could have very high success rate. And you understand, we were in the period of 80s. It's 40 years from now. What happened? A lot of group inside the world began with, to work with their system. Where are we today? Today we have publication from this group. I do not want to take too much time to go in details for publication. But this is a publication from the group from Daniel Boozer in Bern, working from the origin uh, in Switzerland with Professor Schroeder, working from the origin with Stroman ITI implant. What do you do? I have noticed the connection is not so good. I hope it's correct. What he has oh, done? Is okay. They place implant and they control 20 years later. Partially dentalous patients. 20 years later, 89.5% of success after 20 years. What is this paper? This paper is a group from Sweden, from a group of colleagues that work with the Brandmark system from the earlier regime, and 20 years later, they publish their result for fully odontolous patient. Which result? 99.2% of success after 20 years. I think this is a very, very important part of my publication. You have to understand, all these things are very old implants. All companies will say to you, no, it's not modern, it's not correct, we have much more better. Okay. They were done without very specific attention. They were done with never any uh, actual X-rays that were not existing. And 20 years later, it's more than 90% of success. Each implant system, different groups. And people continue to say, take care. Uh, implant could be dangerous. You can have a lot of problems. You know other dental treatments that are guaranteeing to, to your patient 19% of success after 20 years? It's the best treatment we never had in dentistry. So we have to take care of this. What is the problem? Due to this, every people every, everywhere in the world, I place every dentist are placing implants to any patient every day. And you know it's not true. And you know most of you probably do not place implants, or some of you press a, a small number. But it's the it's it's reality. If you go in the market and you see what you see, huge difference from countries. You know, Switzerland, we were very proud. This is from uh, 2003. We were very proud because we were in first position, because it's a small country, because the training is good, because the Strauman system is developed in Switzerland, a lot of, of things. But you know, a lot of countries are very, very, very low if you compare. But it's not the problem. What is the number? Switzerland, 2003. Number one, 80 implants for 10,000 people by year. It's quite nothing. You, you understand how many patients lose teeth for 10,000 patients by year? It's very, very low. What happened with time? It increased. And some countries very dynamic, Korea, Italy and Spain in, uh, in, in Europe, Brazil, were in front from Switzerland. But a lot of countries continue to grow, but slowly. And that will take time. It's quite normal for a normal technique. But we are in, two, in 2013. It's more than 30 years after the beginning. So you continue. It's very, very low. But look, Switzerland, we were 80 in two or three. We are a little bit more than 100 in two, or it's not too much. So we continue to have a small utilization of implant. And the main part of my presentation 
will be to try to explain to you why the best medical and dental treatment we have for the origin of dentistry is not used. Why? It's very easy to understand. And you know it. All of you, you know it. Why? If you want to treat somebody, you have two persons. You have you, the dentist, and you have the patient. What is the, the feeling of most of the dentists today? He said, it's complex, it's expensive, I'm not trained. What says the patient? It's complex, it's expensive, and have no and, and enough good information. So on both sides, patient and professional, people do not consider it is a normal uh, dental treatment that any dentist can do uh, to every day in his dental chair. So why? You know why. Because when you discuss about implants, you see such things. And we will discuss, is it necessary or not? But it's not the point. It's not the point to know if it is necessary or not. You can understand for any dentist, it's not the way he's used to work every day. And for any patient, it's not the way he's used to have dental treatment in, on, in his dentist. For both, it's, it's different. For both, it's complex. For both, you see only the material. The cost is, is higher than to do usual treatment. You look on the X-ray, you do not see the X-ray to treat a decay or to, to, to do a period treatment. Or, so it's different. And for 40 years, it's different. People said, OK, there is dentistry, history. And there is something people said implantology. And I explained to you, implantology is crazy. There is no implantology. Everybody use it, could use implant. Every patient could receive implant. But it is dentistry. It is prosthesis. It is not something different. But as people think it is something different, they do it differently. And as they do it differently, frequently, they do it worse than they do correct dentistry. So you have to take knowledge of this and to open your eyes and to open your mind. Because this is the way I would like to explain to you. What is lacking? Education is lacking. Education is lacking, and you, you, you can understand in most universities in the world today, no one student is treating patients with implants. Some have course, some have on-zone, some have information, some can see something, but to have on his student chair a patient with a missing tooth, and we said, we will replace it by a crown on an implant, probably, I do not know. I, I, I move in a lot of places in the world. I speak about pre-graduate students, not postgraduate, not specialists, pre-graduate students. What do we have done in Geneva? We began to do it with students in 1989, 30 years. 30 years, every dentist in Geneva has on his chair patient he treat with implants. We stopped to do prosthetic normal treatment on teeth in, in the University of Geneva more than 20 years ago. Why to continue to, to, to prepare teeth when you can place an implant? So every student do it. And that could be done in every university. If it's not done, it's because people prefer to keep implantology for later. It's not correct. I'm a university professor. I teach implant to my basic student for 30 years. Everybody could do it. And everybody can do it tomorrow morning if you want. So this is the most important problem. And what is existing? As it's not trained during university time, what is existing? It's existing recommendation from publication. And if people focus to the first publication from Brandmark, he explained, yes, you have to work like this. Because people were afraid. It was, is it possible it works? So they take a lot of care. But now we learn, we, we learn a lot of things. So as it is not trained inside university, is it not teach? You say there is no clinical training. There is no clinical utilization. What exists everywhere in the world? 
huge congress huge congress actually implant congress it could be more than 4000 people in a room you think you can learn something on a medical field field in such in such thing nothing nothing it's just a, like to go to to see a picture or like to go to theater or like to go to sport event it's nice we can see friends and the same group of teacher all working with one system or another system is giving the same lecture for years and every time complex things i explain to people stop to go in such things there is no any interest you go to theater go to, to do anything but not go in such things you can if you have no knowledge you can take nothing oh so what is existing every day every day everywhere in the world where is trained implantology in hotel rooms conference rooms from hotel you think you can learn something on a medical field in such condition it's quite impossible so people spend a lot of time a lot of money for nothing and if they do one course okay two course okay three after three they never place implant because they see every time complex things every time every people said different things and they're totally lost sometimes you you want to i would like to learn how to practice what can you have plastic mandibles pig mandibles human head if you are rich enough or you human plastic guys you think you could learn a medical technique like this it's quite impossible and everybody do it everywhere in the world every day every week every weekend for nothing and for 30 years 40 years nothing changed because nobody never see what is normal implantology treatment but it exists everywhere and a lot of people are involved inside and a lot of people think okay we are doing something but if they look on the result they do nothing i've done for years and understood it's crazy i do not help people like this i stopped to, to to participate in huge congress and something like this a long long time ago because there is no any interest you said what you want for one hour and nobody take care or nobody discuss or no the result is horrible so you have a lot of people that speak every day everywhere what they said what they want what they want what they trust, uh, what they like to do, uh, what they used to do, who control, who is it, who is the guy who is speaking. Everywhere in the, in the world, dentists agree to see anybody, know any true knowledge, know any true value, know any true experience, no one international publication speaking and, explic and giving explication, I do like this, I'm very proud. There is no any control on the people who is speaking. And every time there is some commercial and financial interest in, inside. So we are in a very terrible situation because we do not have the possibility to exchange. So what is the result? Nothing changed. Nothing changed. That has image from Paris program to learn implantology in 2021. Okay, so we are 40 years later and nothing changed. And we know that that do not work because nobody uses implant. So probably that do not work. So we have to try to see, is it necessary? Can we change something? It's exactly what I would like to do. Why do I speak to you? I speak to you because I have 40 years of uh, experience in the field. But I have, I have done from the early beginning anything we have done to try to do a new way we don't study we publish study not in the local dental paper only in high level international reference papers only because it's the only control you can have of somebody who is existing on the scientific international level and today it's very evident you have just to take to, to take your, 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 your phone and to ask to Google or to ask to PubMed, 
and you will see you do it immediately and you will see how many publications I have done in international review. Look how many publications as people who are speaking to you at international level. I do not say in, in the local uh, dental paper or you have just to pay for an investing and, and you have the possibility to explain what you want. We have some scientific knowledge today. And this is the model I will try to develop with colleagues from a lot of countries, which is this international clinical college, which is to use for clinical utilization, for clinical rules, only evidence-based pu scientific published data. And you will see it's quite different from what you, what you hear every, every day. So what is evidence-based? You know it. It's if an expert given information is nice, it can be true, and sometimes we progress like this. But as soon as you have an, an interest, you have to prove it. To prove it is to do studies. And if you do studies, you publish studies. After is to do more control studies. And after to have to try to have uh, some comparison inside the studies. And we try to have also comparison and critical uh, with large studies. And the best is to do systematic review to what is existing inside the scientific knowledge. And normally, it will be necessary to teach only data from systematic reviews, because this is the, the scientific truth today. Tomorrow that can change, uh, in one year that will change, in 20 years it will be totally different, because science never stops. But at least to give today, and you are not exigent enough. You are able to, to trust anybody. Anybody on a, on, on a scene with a microphone, you think it is an expert. No, it's somebody who likes to speak. It's not, it could be an expert, it could be, but you have just to control it is. But people said they're expert. The reality is frequently different. So you have really to take care. So what we have done, and it's why it's the story I would like to share with you. 1987, we created the group. 1989, students from the University of Geneva had implant patients on their chair with control from postgraduate students, with control from professor, like any topic, but we train it in a dental clinic from a university, not in an hotel room uh, working on plastic models. My students never have done practical on plastic model. They never place implant in pigs, you know, on a table. What do you want to learn placing implant on a table in pigs' jaws? Nothing. If you are not able to, to do it a, a hole in, 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 in bone, I think uh, you have to change uh, your activity. No, everybody is able to, to take a drill and to, 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 and to do a hole inside a, a, a bone on a table. There is no any interest. And it works every day. And a lot of people pay a lot for this, for nothing. And nobody take care. It cannot help me. So what we have done from the early beginning, from the early beginning, we try to say, OK, we want to give access to this superb treatment to the larger number possible of patients and dentists. So we began to train dentists, and we began to treat patients from the early beginning. And we participate, this is due to age, this is due to the situation, we participated in the development of implantology with ITI, which was a superb scientific team, with the development of the Stroman implant in comparison with the Brandmark system, because in 1987, I moved to Brandmark Clinic to be trained to the Brandmark system, and later I moved back to Switzerland, and I, I began to work with the ITI system, and, and we participate in ITI from the early beginning. We participate in development of ITI, in creation of ITI, which is today larger, larger group. Yes, you are saying something? Hello? No, it's okay? No. So what is, a, what is the minimally invasive evidence-based implant utilization? It's just your decision. If you want to do it, you can do it tomorrow morning. You have just to say, we are able to find the best technique and system to allow to do it as easy, simple, and, uh, and, and with the best result as possible. 
And what is the, the optimization? The optimization is just with scientific elements to keep only what is necessary, not to continue to do things because people said, okay, you have to do like this. Okay, or you have to use this system, or you have to use this implant, or you have to use this material. Just to look, is it, is it an, uh, true? And is it an help for my patient? And you, when you take this decision, it's already every time the less aggressive. And inside the less aggressive, the financial part is also inside. Because the most aggressivity for implantology is the cost, actually, everywhere in the world. So I tried to develop what I named the smarter implant concept, and you will understand why, why smarter. And it's based on minimally invasive medical implant utilization, as I said from the beginning. Where is coming from a smarter, smarter way? It's a reflection from medical groups coming from US and now coming in, in Switzerland. From several years, people in medical field begin to take interest for, we have a lot of material, we have a lot of techniques, we have a lot of possibility. Is it necessary to use them every time? Is more medicine every time better? And they said no. And they developed the concept which is choosing wisely. You see, what is medicine? It is this relation which is a very specific relation between a professional and a patient. And what is the, the rule and the role and the, the goal from the professional and the responsibility from the professional is to try to adapt with his knowledge the best way to treat this individual patient. And there is no systematic treatment. I'm afraid. On internet, on Facebook, you see a lot of clinical cases, x-rays, picture, no interest. People are very proud to say, okay, I've done such thing. Yes, there is no to be proud. Sometimes it's not very correct. And when it's correct, it's normal. Every dentist has to do correct treatment. So to be proud and to put a case on, on, on Facebook, I cannot understand. So, so ego from human is crazy. It's, it's, for me, it's incredible. There is, most things you see, there is no any interest. But to discuss cases on an X-ray, it's, it's never possible in, on, in medicine. There is a patient around the X-ray. So choosing wisely is to move back to discussion with the patient to the best treatment for him. And this was translated in Switzerland by my friend, Professor Gaspo from Internal Medicine, which was professor of the same period as me. And what he said, he said, now we, we have to, to move to smarter medicine. And I think it's a nice way to say smarter medicine. Smarter medicine is choosing wisely in Switzerland. It is more medicine is not always better. And probably it's difficult for you to read the small sentence on the place. But what he said, smarter medicine, do physicians need political pressure to eliminate useless intervention? Because now we know that a lot of people have to support things done by doctors and also done by dentists that are quite not necessary or probably could be at risk for patients. And we have to move back to a more adapted to patient interest, not only to use a technique. To use a technique is nothing. Just looking the interest of the patient. So what is the problem today? Nothing changed. The philosophy says the same, but something changed. The progress on technical points and, and, and commercial points. And you see every day new motor, new piezo system, new kit of instruments, new X-ray system. All these things, very high cost. All these things are increasing the complexity of the treatment and the cost of the treatment. Are they really necessary? It's very difficult for a, 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 a dentist alone in his clinic to be able to have a filter. Everybody shows the same thing. Everybody, sh uh, every paper, every Congress, okay, most of them are not necessary. Or most of them you have to take care. Nobody explained you have to take care. So most instruments you see now, the real interest is very limited. But people said with this, I do a lot of, okay, take time. 
wait a little bit and you will see the scientific publication. What happened during the last 30 years? After one, two, three years of enthusiastic interest, people said, no, it was not working. No, it was not working. No, it was not working. And people put the, the instrument where, where they want. They paid for it, they imposed them for the patient, and, and everybody stopped. So you have to be very, very prudent and not to be confident with any of such uh, proposal. Take care. What is minimally invasive medical implant use? My goal, that was my goal from the early beginning. I said, okay, a patient is able to come on a dental chair. It's not nice to come on a dental chair. We have a lot of not nice instruments, not nice things. Okay, we have good local anesthesia, but it's not nice to, to, to come for dental treatment. I said, okay, a patient agreed to do this. I treat him every day and he agreed. And today you need an implant. Why I have to change? What is the reason? What is the explanation? I don't know. People said, you have to do like this. Okay. And what we say? We said, okay, is it possible to do differently? And you know, this is a perio specialist, a beautiful clinic inside downtown Geneva, nice patient. What he's doing today? He's placing implant. But he's placing implant like this for, for 30 years. So what is the question? It's really necessary to do sterile surgery? You ask one time a question about this? You think it is possible to do sterile surgery in dentistry? You think dentists are trained to do sterile surgery? Look at any video. After one minute, you see, oh, they are well-dressed with a very beautiful tenure of surgeon, but that could be like a fireman, or a, a policeman or something like this. It's just dressing. No any way to the, the only basic thing about asepsis. So what you said, you said, okay, we have to work, we have to work like this. I'm sorry, uh, Professor Bernard, but I have to interrupt in this part because uh, uh, I'm, I innovated uh, the ghost trial uh, protocol and there are three uh, universities already adapting the, this protocol and they are working. I'm with, sorry, I do not understand trial. which protocol you are explaining. Yes, uh, everything in the, in, in the surgery room in this protocol is sterilized yeah. by the autoclave. Yes. But uh, even, even the napkins, the even the patient <laughs> apron, uh, even what we uh, dress, even the masks, everything is go uh, with the sterilization and through the autoclave. Okay, but uh, 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 you, you can find it in my YouTube channel. But this is what we are going to tell okay, people okay. about now. Okay, okay, I, I, I do not totally understood. Uh, every dentist is using autoclave to clean the material, and it's the same thing. But for dressing, there is no any interest. Look at this private uh, dentist uh, for for the protocol we are using here. No, any dear friend, you have to change just to change. No, any interest. No, any no any advantage. This is private dentist, dental clinic inside Switzerland, like this, no anything. Their result on 2,082 implants, 90.52% of success. If you do better dressing in what you want, show me. No any interest, everybody do it, everybody do it. No any interest. No it any change in anything. It, it is not necessary. You have, now a, you have now a lot of publication on this field, a lot. We have done a thesis from University of Geneva. A thesis of University of Geneva is very controlled by a lot of people. This thesis is in the open source from, uh, from uh, Dr. Arvanitu in the open source thesis from University of Geneva. Everybody can control. Every dentist in the world are very happy to dress like children to place implants. No any interest. No any difference. You will never see any difference. So you have just to change. Because you use things which are expensive for nothing. You lost time, you lost money for nothing. That changed nothing. Actually, it, is quite uh, it, it, it would be a lot of same. You can say what you want. What I said is exactly what I explained from the beginning. A lot of people said what they want. What I said is scientific evidence. 
when you have a better scientific evidence, you are allowed to say something. Without any scientific evidence, you are not allowed to say something. Okay? So, with your beautiful, I don't know what you use, succeed to have more than 19.5, and we can discuss. Okay? And if you think, including if you have more, that explain to, to take this, such problem and cost every day for nothing, I will never follow you. And every people I train are working like this and very happy. This is what we have to change. It's why nobody changed that we do not use implant. You have to understand, no thing to dress is to lose time and money only. No one people is able to work correctly sterile drip. No one, I've never seen. I've seen horrible things. So I know and explain to you from the beginning, it could be difficult. Because what I said, it's opposite to what do a lot of people. But you can continue to be in the false way, or you can agree to change. Do it tomorrow morning and you will see never a difference. And you can do it also without no steroid gloves, and that changed nothing. This we are doing the study actually. So what was explained from the early beginning from sterility, in, it's crazy, it's impossible in oral cavity. Impossible. And no any interest. 99.5% of success. If you do better, we can discuss. If you have no better, you are not allowed to say it's better. Even if it's better, it would be statistically insignificant. So I agree with you if it is uh, scientific-based evidence. So I know, I, I I know it is you. difficult, but, but I know if you want to change things, if you want to stop to not to practice the best dental treatment because it's too complex, it's too expensive, you have to move inside. And it's just the beginning. I will do it for everything. You know, everything which I use every day, today, most of them are not, have no any interest. But people continue. No, any taking care of any knowledge, nothing. They continue. So this is done. So, the other point, where to place implant? Everywhere. Any missing tooth. But how to do? Following normal prosthetic rules. Why? Because it is implants, people do what they want. You can place implant in fully not to patient. Why to place them in a position, anything? We just do normal prosthesis on implant, small bridges. And we place implant in good position and good axis. This is very important also. And people say, oh, it's superb to do fixed rehabilitation. No, it's superb also to place two implants to stabilize the denture. And this is a terrible support we give to all patients. And it's not expensive. And you change their life. This can be done every day, everywhere. With two implants, you change life of patient, no removable denture, no risk. And this is very, very, Nobody shows this. This is 90% of implant activity. And nobody show it because, oh, it's not complex. There is no graph, there is nothing. It's the most important part of, of implant activity everywhere in the world. Not to prepare teeth to replace one tooth. How to do better? You can do it, and everybody can do it tomorrow morning in, in any location. The only rule is change nothing from what you do for conventional treatment. Try to think implant utilization and not implantology. You have to, to lost implantology. Implantology is no, in, no any rule, no any reason. You have to move to implant use. And it's not to change anything. I use implant like I use other things. What do we do for, for examination? You look and you palpate, okay? And we do it every day. And every people to say now said 3D X-ray. The worst thing that is existing in dentistry for 10 years now is CBCT. CBCT is giving those we never gave to an, any patient in the world for years. So we, we are taking a, a huge risk for nothing. Same thing. Nobody take care of the most important problem, which is radio protection. And radio protection is very simple. As low as possible, possibly achievable. So one extra which is not done, is you win something. Uh, just to do a summary, 
I never use one CBCT for implant. No one. And every people and, and students trained by me, beginners, do not use. And every people said, you need to. You need to give X-ray to your patients. Okay. This is a superb way to place implant. Panoramic X-ray is the best value irradiation result is the best you can do. Less irradiation for the most important information and palpation of the crest. Superb study from Carl Dula Danny Buzer in Switzerland in Bern. What they said, they do like this with their fingers they palpate, with the panoramic they look the bone and they said, I decide the diameter of the implant and the length of the implant. And later they have done CBCT. They never change. No any interest. They do not change one case. And what they said, clinical examination is enough for determination of the width of the crest and panoramic X-ray is enough for the length. So today there is no any interest to produce any CBCT to place an implant. But everybody recommend to do it every day. And we, we, we are giving a lot of X-rays to patients. We are giving a lot of bill of uh, CBCT. And it's worse than not, not, not necessary because it's, it's, it's exactly the topic from smarter medicine. We are giving adverse things to patients for nothing. So full radiation protection and do not do 3D examination for implants. That is no use. And people say, oh, it could be risky. It could be risky where? Oh, it could be risky in distal mandible. OK, why? Ah, oh, there is an air. Yes, I know. OK, but you think a CBCT is better to see a dimension, uh, in vertical dimension? You know a CBCT is not an image. You know a CBCT is, is produced by a computer with algorithm. There's a lot of progress, but no any radiologist do it without at least two millimeters of security, what we do on panoramic X-ray. And we have done studies because everything I said, we have done studies. We have done studies and we publish studies and we publish studies in the best uh, review from the specialty. And what we observe, more than 250, um, uh, 2,500 implants, only panoramic in distal mandibule never one sensitivity disorder. Why? Because it's not the X-ray that protects the nerve. It's the length of the implant. Plus short implant, you will never have problem. Plus short implant, you will never need to have a very uh, difficult or acute uh, X-ray evaluation. So there is some rules to, to, to work correctly and to avoid any complication, but it's never a technique, it's to think. So, Guided surgery. Everybody is speaking today, every day of guided surgery. Guided surgery, what's first thing? 3D examination. So radiation doses. Okay. And sometimes for one tooth or for two teeth. And nobody takes care. It's possible to do uh, to, uh, such difficulty to place one implant or two implants. Okay. Why? Why guided surgery? Because we can see something like this. So if we can see something like this, we can say, OK, oh, this people has to use a guide. But he has not to, to use a guide. He has to stop to work. Because if a dentist is able to place implants like this, it's not a guide in it. It's a, it's a psychological treatment. But it exists. All this is coming from internet site. So, you think it is dentistry? No, it's not dentistry. <laughs> and in this, in this publication on the internet, people show this. I think it's not nice for this guy, because probably this guy has better results than the dentist who plays these implants. So this is the maximum, but as two labs, you see horrible things. People, implants, it's outside of dentistry. Oh, I have a drill, or oh, have an implant, or oh, have bone, I do a hole and it's correct, and, and lab has to find a solution. But this is horrible, and this is quite incredible. I was very surprised to find it, but 
it's quite in, but this is very frequent. This is very frequent. What is the problem? It's not a problem of guide. There is no treatment planning. There is no any reflection. There is no any knowledge. Because if you have any knowledge, I think a dentist knows approximately what is a tooth. He knows approximately where is a tooth. He knows approximately with dimension as a tooth. And to place an implant so far from, from the, the last teeth, tooth, or to place it too close, or, or to place this non-parallel, it's just I, I take care to nothing. You do not need, people who are working like this do not need guide. They just need to learn. They just need to take care. They just need to sing to their patients. But look on the internet, you will, you will see things like this every day, and nobody seems to be, it's not, oh, you see the crazy thing? No, you, you, you see the case uh, uh, down where a screw, probably there was a graft. And if as soon as there is a graft, the dentist is very happy. But the implant is placed. You see the, the shape of the crown? No any reflection. No any treatment planning. No any skill. So if you have to do guide to avoid this, it's crazy. You have just to change the people. Normally, it would not be allowed to place implants like this. So what is the problem? To do guide surgery, we have to think why we use implants. Because we do not use implants to, to use implants. We use implants to do prosthesis. So we need the treatment planning. And as soon as we have a treatment planning, anybody know where is a tooth, which shape is a tooth, which dimension is a tooth, how is the occlusal space, how is the occlusal uh, opposite uh, teeth. So, and it's, we, have, we have done this with Professor Belzer 40 years ago with David Garber in US. They, 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 they decide to, to speak about prosthetically driven implant placement. It's, 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 it's evident because implant placement is for prosthetic. If you do not do it prosthetically driven, you have to change your activity. But you have to explain it every day because nobody is afraid to place implant in any location. It's like this, it's implant. It's not dentistry, it's implant. It's implantology by implantologist. People who are placing implant in any position, taking care to not anything. And I'm sure a lot of people have seen and, and, and see every day. So what is a good way? What is guided surgery? Is to place implant correctly? Where? Only one place. An implant has only one place. One, no two. Good position, good axis. And this is possible every day for every implant in any location. And any people, any dentist, any implantologist, any surgeon that said is due to bone is not true. Is due to, he do not take any care. Because if he take care, he plays them correctly. But nobody take care to place them correctly. It's like this. Or people perhaps do it, but not people who show most of things. I've seen one other presentation in a congress in Paris. The dentist showing graft any case. No one implant placed correctly for one hour. And nobody is afraid. So we have done everything. Everything explained to you, we have done. And we observe, no, it's quite impossible because bone is not in good position. After you do this, you do the famous numeric guided surgery system. Okay. We have now a good knowledge is not accurate enough today. Perhaps one day, but today is not. But every people continue to say, yes, it's better to, it's better than to do anything without thinking, probably. But if you work correctly, it's not better. With that, such night of Nobel Guide, I succeeded myself to place implant outside of the crest. By hand, I never place an implant outside of the crest. And this, the case I've done like, like this, I remove the implant and I place implant correctly by, with my hand. So all these things are commercial things, the true interest is not real and it's not necessary. It augments cost, it augments radiation for nothing. So you have to consider, every people said it, okay, but we can do differently. 
And this is a choice. And you think radio protection because any numerical guide is 3B CT or scan analysis. And this is non-normal radiation, non-necessary radiation. So what is guided surgery? It's just to take care. It's just to look correctly what you do. And it's just to learn something. One human being, you and me, are not able to look correctly in any place they are looking. Because depending from your position, what you see is not the reality. It's exactly like an X-ray. When you take an X-ray, if you do not place correctly your, your system, your, your image is not a true image. It's the same thing when you look. And any surgeon who wants to look everything alone never will place correctly an implant, never. It's not possible on a biologic point of view. Your eye and your brain are not possible to do it correctly in a position. It's very easy to do it with two people because each people is on one side, each people control. You just need to have measurement tools. Nobody place implant without measuring. Is it the good position from the Zalas tools? And to measure between implants, which shape of crown you want to do. And if you want to do primary crown, which are seven millimeter, every implant has to be seven millimeter to do a very nice crown. And you need instruments. You need gauge to control the axis. If you have a good system, you have a good treatment planning, and you agree, I'm not able to control anything and my assistant will control me, you will place your implant every time correctly. You know, this is a young colleague I train for clinical training I do in, uh, in Switzerland. His assistant understood perfectly and you see which position he took to be able to be exactly in the good position. And they explain to the colleague, yes, it's correct, you can go, or oh, more measure, more distal, more palatal, more, okay. And any people working like this, this, uh, it, this was his uh, first implant. And you know, people are doing guide to place one implant between two teeth. I explained in course, a monkey will be able to do it. So there is a huge problem if you do not take care to uh, think, yes, I'm able to do it. And opposite side, she has done exactly the same way. And you can do everything the same way. You know, this is something we published. We have done to try. Placement of implant, immediate loading, the same day. And we have done it by hand and visual control. And as I explained to do, no implant in any location, no implant in any axis, just implant in good position and axis. And if you can do it for complex cases where the same day you do two arches for immediate loading, you can do for any patient without any CBCT for all these cases, without any uh, uh, such guide for all, all these cases. It's very, very easy. You know, this is a friend I train also. Now he's also instructor for training. What is an X-ray? An apical X-ray is enough to place an implant. We do not need other things. And you do it correctly with, with the colleagues. To place implant parallel is very easy. You have just to measure the good dimension from the tooth, to measure the dimension between implants, to control the axis all the long up to I finish to screw my implant. And later, it's very easy. We use only straight abutment. Using angulated abutment is frequently, I do not take care. If you take care, you place your implant correctly in good axis. And if you use only straight abutment, it's simpler, it's easier, it's stronger, and it's cheaper. And you take three seconds to place correctly your implant. No guide, no CBCT, no cost for X-ray, no dressing, no thing. Just, I just want to put an implant to do a crown. And if you do it like this, everything is very easy. No, this is all this are going from our studies and our work from ITI. You know, full body abutment, correctly placed only by measurement and visual control. And now what we have, ITI produces it for Straman. 
you have all system to help for impression. You have parts to put on the, uh, on the model. You have system to produce the crown. So to produce a bridge, an implant, it's much more easier than to produce a bridge for teeth. You have nothing to do. You have nothing to prepare. The impression is perfect. And for the lab, it's very easy. And people continue to say, oh, you have to take care for prosthetic and implant. Prosthetic and implant is nothing. If you place your implant correctly, it's finished immediately for the lab and for you. Just to think, I just want to have a crown, not implant. I, nobody wants implant. Implant, the patient do not want implant. I, I could show you cases all along a day. Never a planification with model. Never a CBCT. Never a guide. Only measurement and visual control. And you place your implant every time in good position, good axis, and parallel each other. And you do prosthetic rehabilitation that corresponds exactly to the need of the patient. These are done by beginners from my group. And it's really the, the routine. Every day we are working like this. Every day we are placing implant in good position and axis. And if you do not do it, it's just because you do not take care. If you want to do it and you have a good assistant that help you, you do it tomorrow morning without one x-ray without one dollar of cost. Just you use your mind, your eye, and your hand. And normally this is not history. You do it every day for any other thing. Why to change for implant? Dentists are doing with the hand something much more complex than to place a hole inside bone. It's no thing to do a hole inside bone. And people think it's surgery. It's not. It's not surgery. I'm really sorry, but it's not surgery. Okay? It's implant placement. Parallel. I can show you a lot of cases. Every time you will see they are parallel in good position. This is only the rule. And I said, single case, complex case, same situation. Just to think to do it. Just to think to do it. I just would like to do two, two minutes stop because I have to plug my computer and we, we go in a very, very important topic, which is yes, how to choose uh, the legs of him. We can take uh, a few minutes rest. It's okay. I, I'm back. Okay, now it's safe. So uh, I, have, I have two points I would like now to, to, to finish with you, which is the dimension of the implant, which is very, 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 very important. And like this, you will understand. A lot of years ago, people from the Brand Mac Clinic said, we have a problem when we use short implant, and we have a problem when you use uh, implant in, 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 in quite soft bone. And they said, there is a need to do research to increase the success rate in maxilla. And what is strange is they were using the Brandmark system, which is a very good system, titanium system with smooth surface. And we were using the Stramat system, which was also a very nice system, titanium, pure titanium, both of them are pure titanium, but the Stramat was with a rough surface by addition of plasma spray of titanium on it. So, we were not observing the result, the, the problem in, in, in short implant or low density bone. So I decided to do a study. We have done a study on dogs where we place smooth and rough surface. Brandmark implant, submerged, bone level, three months of waiting, perfect success, no implant mobile, no idea radio recency, 100% success. So we said, okay, it's a good system and we work correctly. Stroman implants, rough surface, we place them non-submerged, 
So you can understand that non so much could be more risky. At this time, people was trusting it was more risky. And you search around the implant, three months, same dogs, one side Brahma, one side Straman. We have done maxilla and mandible and 100% success. So we can say no difference. We can say no difference. There is no difference. You, you place one model or the other model, no difference. And it was very nice for Straman because we observed that including non-submerge with the risk of infection, the risk of mechanical loading, uh, it works also. But we were very surprised to say, okay, why they have problem in maxilla and short implant, and we have no with Straman. And to look, we want to look what is the reality of the bone on courage. Because this is just a integration. It's not mobile, it's fixed. But what's, what is the mechanical strength? We, we, we did not know. And in patient, you cannot know. So we decide to measure. So we, we, we force the implant, we talk the implant out, and we register the talk to break out the integration and to remove the implant. And here it was a huge, huge, huge surprise. It was the first time it was noticed in the literature. And now this paper is used. Now it's finished because we know it for years. But at the beginning, it was a very interesting paper. Because you look from the smooth surface, very low torque, less than 50 Newton. So it's close to what you screw when you screw an abutment. And you look to rough surface, and you see the six millimeter from rough surface is much more two times stronger anchorage than a 10 millimeter smooth. And if you are smooth seven to 10, no change, you are rough six to 10, you have a huge, huge difference. And we, we learn and we observe why by uh, analysis of the implant, because on a, on a smooth surface, you have just a contact, but when you were in screw, you have quite no a problem of uh, fracture only on the apical hole of the implant. If you re talk, uh, reverse talk uh, around the surface, bones stay everywhere on the surface and break inside bone. So it's not the same bone on courage. We use the same name, osteointegration, but if you work on a smooth surface, it's not the same that if you work on, on, on rough. Now it's finished. Nobody continue to use smooth surface. So we have to understand, we have done a lot of studies on, on this surface and we observe every time the same thing. All implant with a rough, people said texture or said micro rough surface, all have bone on surface when you try to remove them and a strong encouraging bone. There are some differences, but we do not know if in clinic such differences arrive. But what is very important, it's very important to understand that we have two implant systems, one smooth, one rough. And between them, you have really, really a border. You have really a border because the bone of courage is not the same. And we, this was an, an old implant, but now we have progress in surface. So probably the bone of courage continue to increase. And every day you see new surface that people are proposing. So what is the problem? We have today implants that allow to have a very, very strong and fast bone on courage. And people continue to follow the rule that we are done for an implant system which has less strong on courage and much more strong bone on courage. So people do not take advantage of the scientific knowledge. We have take, um, took an advantage of the scientific knowledge. We know we can put less implants. People were explaining you have to put a lot of implants. It's not necessary. People were saying you have to use long implants. We said not, it's not necessary. And people said you have to wait long, long time, three, four, six, nine months. And we said no, it's not necessary. Six weeks is enough everywhere. So you know that change the philosophy. And this is not we decided to do it. It's just we observe a difference in bone on courage and we adapt our clinical utilization to this difference. And for short implants, we are discussing it for, for more than 20 years. And we're using it. 
For prosthetic, we have done with uh, Professor uh, Buzer and Professor Belzer, we have done the paper from the Linde book, uh, the, the precedent version of the, of the Linde book, and we observe, yes, we can put one implant by crown. It works. We do it mainly for rather small implants, but it's not necessary. You can do it like this. And this is easier because you do not depend too much from the space. You can adapt. You can adapt because you have only two implants and three crowns. So you can add, it's easier to perform. So we have done it with two implants for three crowns or with three implants for four crowns, and it works perfectly. So we know we can use less implant, and it's very, very easy in a lot of situations. I continue to see a case, a lot of cases on the internet with a lot of implant. It's not necessary. We can reduce, reduce, reduce the number of implants. People were afraid to do cantilever, and people said you, you cannot do cantilever on implant. We have done. We have done, and also it, it can be nice because sometimes you have a location where it's not nice to place the implant. You do a cantilever, it's easier. We have done measured cantilever. We have done distal cantilever. And we never have observed any problem. And we have observed a very, very nice study from the ITI group. Cantilever, 10-year results, they have 100% of success. So there is no any need to be afraid by cantilever. You can put cantilever what you need. You need a good surface, don't a rough surface. You need a good abutment uh, implant connection design, not to have mobility inside. And you have advantage to cement them uh, to avoid the fracture of small screws if there is too uh, heavy loading. But it's very easy to do. And we continue to work. And there is also now an evidence on this. Something we cannot do on one tooth, or it's dangerous to do on one tooth. One implant, one crown, one cantilever. This is also a publication on Astra implant. We have one on also on Strauman implant. It's then it's three year result, 100% success. So we can do sync on implant, we cannot do on teeth, we have to learn. It's easier to use implants than to use teeth to do prosthetic treatment. So we have to learn. We do not need long implants. This is very, very important. This is a publication, a very old publication 20 years ago from our group in private practice colleagues trained in, in the department working in practice. They place implant short for Brandmark, who was saying you, ne you need to have at least 12 millimeter. We place mainly 10 and 8 at this time. More than 500 implants, cumulative success rate after, uh, after seven years, they were 99.40%. And as I explained before, they never address anything to place their implant. So you see, we can have immediate good results and long-term good results. So we have to agree that we do think sometimes because we think it's correct, we think it's necessary, but when we have evidence it's not true, we have to change. And what is very strong today, and I want not to give you a publication, but today it's a, it's a strong, strong, strong evidence. This nice paper also 10 years ago, what is, there is no any difference in result in an implant eight millimeter or shorter and an implant quite normal, which is 10 millimeter or more. So today there is no any reason to use an implant longer than eight millimeter. And I never place, it's finished. My longer implant is, is, is eight. If I've reduced height of bone, I move to six, and I know, and I will show you, we can move to four, but it's very infrequent. With eight millimeter implant, we, 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 we can do it in most place, and six millimeter, we can do all place. We have done in Geneva, meta-analysis and, and review of the literature that shows that there is no result for short implant less than eight or very short implant, which is six <laughs> millimeter. And we do not uh, notice no, difference also with diameter of implants. 
So every people continue to use lung implants or to look, oh, which lung I, I can use. It's finished, it's old fashioned. There's, there is no more scientific evidence to support it. And I, I show you, and now we have more studies. You can do prosthetic treatment on four millimeter rough surface implants. On this first study from Sraman, they have seen a small difference, lower than six, but now we have more and more, and more literature review and four millimeter is possible. But it's very unfrequent not to have four millimeter. So we can do it with very short implants. And I will give you a new thing, and I try to go fast to, to not to keep you too long. I will try something which is also a very, very interesting topic. Probably a lot of you uh, do, not, uh, do not see. And uh, for us, it was not evident. Why we use short implants? We use short implants because we lose teeth. And as we lose teeth, we lose bone. And if we lose bone, we have a, an higher uh, interspace uh, dimension. So we have short implants and we have to do large crown. So we have very strange rehabilitation. And uh, uh, an, an ITI scholar in Geneva, we were welcoming every year two ITI scholars, young colleagues doing a, a, a one year with us uh, to, to continue their training. And one of the colleagues from Spain, uh, Dr. Blanes, said to us, do you observe the result when you have a bad crown to implant ratio? And we said, what, what is a bad crown to implant ratio? Is it a bad crown to implant ratio is when the crown is longer than the implant? We said, we never observe. He said, okay, I want to, I want to test. I said, no problem. We gave, we, we gave him all our data and he looked inside. And he decided to look how much failures. And you know, we were on uh, five to 10 years, only posterior implants, only short implants, and we had a cumulative success rate, which was 98%. He said, I've never seen such good, he was working with Brian Mark before to come in Geneva. He said, I've never seen such good result uh, for short implant in posterior area. I think, okay, I'm very impressed. And he said, but I'm sure that if you have a bad crown to improve ratio, you will have no more failure because I've not seen failures, but you will have more bone loosening at the crystal level. And he has done a statistical analysis the good crown to implant ratio, we had no, only 5% with the crown shorter than the implant. The mid group, one between one and two, which is quite impressive, and we have a lot, but it was lacking 25% where we have a crown to implant ratio more than two, more than two. And our mean is 1.77. So we were very afraid. And we observe for the first time a very strange things. The worst crown to implant ratio give the best bone conservation at the crystal level. The opposite for every people who are saying at this time. It's better to have a, a, a very high crown to implant ratio. It's better to have a short implant and a long crown. And a lot of people was, were doing graft to avoid to have a, a, a bad crown to implant ratio. They really have to stop. They really have to stop because it's better to have a short implant and, and a long crown. And, and, and we had a lot of, of proofs because this, uh, I'm sorry, the quality is not so good, but it's a case of a patient with very, very short implant in very soft bone and, and very huge crown and in contact between implants. And this is 15 years after treatment. And this is 17 years after treatment. So we know now that a very short implant with a huge crown is able to resist for a long, long, long time. The only problem that could exist is mechanical problem. So you need to have a good implant, a strong connection, a good bone courage, a, a good surface. But if you have a good implant, it works perfectly. And today it's ev scientific evidence. A lot of review were published this one is from 2014, but we have a new one. And it's very strange because there is a relation, but the relation is opposite. Worse the crown to implant ratio is, better the bone stabilization is. So it's not only possible to use short implants, but it's probably better. So you see the difference 
for what most people said, most, what most people do every day. So if you said, okay, now we use only short implant, life change. And patients are very happy. Other thing, people said with Brandmark, you need to, to wait at least three months in mandibule and probably six or nine months in maxilla. What we have done with Trailman, we press implant, non-submerge, two weeks later, we control uh, hygiene, and six weeks later, we do crown. And we had very, very high success rate. And this changed totally the image of implantology. You have no more to wait. You have no more to have second surgery. It's very simple to perform. It's no pain after surgery. It's no pain during healing. You clean during healing. And after some weeks, you have the crown. It's a normal treatment. The patient come and you have four or five appointments on one half, two months, and it's finished from early beginning to the end. So it's changed totally. And everything I show you, we controlled, we done studies, and we published. I will never say to you, oh yes, it's good to do like this without a proof. And if everybody was doing like me, it will be very, very easy. Not to think, not to trust, to prove by studies. And you see the success we had loading after six weeks. So we are now very confident we can load implant after six weeks. And if you want to go faster, with non-submerged implant is very easy. You place implant, you wait only four weeks, you remove cover screw, you take impression, you prepare the crown, and at six weeks it's in place. So it's beginning and six weeks. We never do because most people, uh, during the study for six weeks, the most important problem was people who were not uh, coming uh, fast enough. So it's not a problem. Due to this, we never perform outside of studies. We have done studies. Outside of studies, we have not performed the all immediate things I see every day. It's crazy. No any interest for any patient. Immediate loading is just to take a risk and it's just to, to produce two crowns. So to ask to the patient to pay one provisional and later a, a definitive crown for six weeks, it's crazy. No any interest, it's not no any interest, it's defavorable for patient. And people are very proud to do it. You know, it's, it's a terrible problem. We can change, for us we change. We never do such things. We do simple things, safe things, and the less aggressive and the shortest and the less expensive for patients. This is medicine. Last word, people said frequently, who have a problem for bone? Why people have a problem for bone? Because it's necessary to, it's normal not to have too much bone. Nobody lose bone. Nobody lose bone outside of trauma or tumors or tumors or surgery for tumors. We lose bone density with time, but we never lose bone. What we lose in our field, we lose alveolar bone. And alveolar bone is not usual bone. As his name is giving the explanation, alveolar bone is living for teeth and with teeth. And when we remove teeth, will, this bone will disappear. We do not lose. It is a biological adaptation. It's not a loosening. Loosening of the tooth, yes, but not loosening of the bone. So to, to think we are able to avoid loosening of bone is just to think we are God. We are able to do some things that nature is not able to do. We do not follow biology. We do not follow nature. Nature and biology, the bone, alveolar bone, disappear after tooth loosening. It takes time. If you place a denture, it's faster. But with time, you lose. And you can do what you want. You will lose it. It will take time, but you will lose it. 
So what we see every, every day, people want to augment bone. You see, I do not trust bone augmentation. For me, bone augmentation do not exist. So people do bone graft everywhere. People are very happy to have this bone into screw. Okay, I will discuss later. Or bone regeneration, which is much more beautiful and it's also a crazy thing. Okay, and a lot of material and a lot of technique and a lot of, of substitute. Okay, to do what? I don't know really what they want to do. So bone graft, yes, it works. Yes, it works, bone graft. And we began to do it. I explained to you, we have done everything. We have done everything. And it's quite normal. We, we, we were doing as people were explaining. Okay, this is a case, iliac crest graft for maxillary sinus. It's not a problem. Uh, I'm a maxillofacial surgeon. We have a possibility to, to have general anesthesia. Okay, it's not a problem. And it works perfectly. Something you have to look. You, you see the very beautiful block we place to enlarge a crest. After five months, when you move back, oh, there is a very adaptation of this block. Its shape is changing. And we think, oh, it's changed. No, it's not changed. It's changing. Actually, what is protecting this graft? My screw. If I remove my screw, what I have to do to place the implant? This bone, which is no use, why to produce bone outside of the crest? Nobody is able to produce bone outside of the crest, only tumors. So what will happen? This bone will move away with time. And if I place my implant inside this graft, my, my implants will be outside of the bone in few months, years, but it will happen. So what we do, look at this, we place implant in the native pre-existing bone. So the graft was no use. But we have done it. And at the end, we were very pro. And I said, okay, it was my first case, I think. I said, okay, it's crazy. I will never agree to have a personally a linear craig's graph to have two crowns. So we said, we have to change. And we have done one, and we have never done two. And from this time, I said, we, we do not need bone. We just have to find something else. And we work with, and we produce it, and we publish it. And we work with sinus elevation without any bone. Because at, this, at the beginning, people said, ah, you need to place bone. And you need also to place substitute. And you need to mix. OK, like cooking uh, recommendation. Some people were putting antibiotics. Some people, OK, cooking, cooking recommendation. And most people were very happy to, to follow cooking, uh, cooking recommendation without any, any, any control, nothing. Just do it. OK. And we are very proud after some years to see some very nice studies coming from the group from uh, Denis Tarno in New York University with Steve Wallace, who has done a lot of sinus elevation. What he said, no difference. You place bone, you place bone substitute. It's better if you place bone substitute than if you place bone. What is the difference? The implant you place inside the graft. If you place smooth surface, you have 60% of success. If you place rough surface, you have 100 so the rule is use rough surface. And you use rough surface and put what you want inside uh, uh, under, under your sinus membrane. And not only put what you want, put eventually nothing. Because there is a lot of studies that show you elevate your mucosa, you just you put your implant, and you just put the mucosa under implant, and you produce boom. And this is what we have decided to do, but without opening the sinus to do this. Why to open the sinus to do this? We have done it by crystal approach, but never with material. I never place material with a crystal approach. You have no any control of what you do. You have a risk to put the material inside the sinus elevation, and it's not necessary. Just slight elevation, placement of implant is nothing. And we began to do it with around up to six when we never need. Up to six, we place a six millimeter implant. So we work for this only less than six. And so we began to do it around four, four and a half, five millimeter. And we place mainly eight millimeter implant. And you see the study, the picture, all oh, the implant is inside the sinus cavity. No, wait a little bit. After three months, we load. 
We loaded after three months in a very reduced amount of bone, but rough surface. What happened? The shape of the sinus floor changed. After six months, yes, it seems to be a little dense around the implant. After one year, we have a new bone formation around the apex of the implant, up the level of the elevation. No sink, no incision, no opening, no material, no sink. For me, it's a normal implant placement, and we build it like a normal implant placement. So we do not ask anything to, to do such thing with kids, no sink. And it works perfectly. OK. But it does not work perfectly if I do not prove it. I can say you anything. What we have done immediately, immediately we open a study, a small group. We have done like this, and we follow them for one year. And one year, what we have? One year, we have 100% success, and we win around two and a half, three millimeters of bone. OK, we were very happy. After one year, habitually, I said, we are safe. But we do not stop. We follow them. After five years, we were 100% success. So you see, we were very, very, very confident. We said, now, OK, no any need to put material inside a, a sinus elevation. And it's very safe around four millimeters of bone. And now the group, I'm retired, but they continue. And they publish, they publish 10 years. And 10 years, they continue to be 100%. And today, we have huge, we have huge review of the literature that show you can do placement of implant in distal maxilla like this without any material, including up to around two to three millimeters of bone. And you have success rate, which has the same that in native bone. So I quite stop totally to do sinus graft. I just do sinus graft when I have no sink. Zero, one millimeter, two millimeter. From three, I begin to place implant without sinus graft. So I do not, I stop totally to do sinus grafts. It's not necessary, less and less. You know, this is routine for us. Any beginners do like this after some weeks of, of training, and including for molars. This is done by a, a, young, a young from the group. Um, personally, I'm afraid. I said, OK, we are very, very limited. It works perfectly. So we have to continue to learn. And a lot of people continue to do graft for no sink. For no sink. After four millimeters of bone to take, and, and now there is a lot of literature that explain it's better to place short implant without sinus elevation than doing it. People who do sinus elevation are at high risk in case of any problem, because now the literature is very strong. So aesthetic part, this is also a terrible thing. People do not want to learn. They do not want to look what is biology. And it is now perfectly demonstrated by a lot of studies. We have, after extraction, a, a, an evident and constant buccal bone resorption. It is a physiological adaptation of the bone to the crest after tooth loosening. And we lose buccal bone. OK. And now people said, yes, but we want to keep it. We want, OK, perhaps I do not trust. I do not trust. And everything I never trust from the beginning, some years later, we got or we produce the proof. And we will produce it also in such situation. So what is a normal situation? The normal situation, any case, is to have a buccal concavity. What to do? No think. Just to accept. Just to agree. It's enough. And just to place inside the native bone. The only thing we can do is something not for implants, not for osseointegration, integration, not for success. Just to try to improve soft tissue shape. 
It can be done by connected graft. It could be done by bone substitute. It could, could be done by local flap. It could be done by anything. But the problem is not the bone. The problem is the concavity. So what is the problem? The problem is front part in maxilla. Front part in maxilla, this concavity is existing. And if you place your implant approximately like was the tooth, you will have a huge problem. And this is what exists for people who are very happy to do immediate things. Because it's very difficult to do immediate and not to be in, in the socket. So what is the risk? The risk is you lose the, the, the bone. You lose nothing. The bone move away. Why he move away? Because he's too thin to continue to live without nothing as support because his vascular support is coming from the periodontal ligament. And on implant, you have not. And the risk is this. You see, and I will show you later, front teeth are not inside the crest. They are outside of the crest. You have just to palpate. And they are covered by a very thin layer of bone. So if you do not take care, you place your implant like this, and you will see this. Wow. And this is terrible, because it's quite impossible to correct. The better thing is to remove the implant and to do a new treatment. We can find, we never had. We, it's only cases I received from colleagues. I never had, because we take care from the beginning. Okay? You see, it's not so nice. Ah, immediate implant placement. Every time, immediate implant placement. And people are very proud. Oh, I'm better than nature. I go, okay, look the result. Young patient, it's a catastrophe. Okay, too, too late. Adaptation is difficult to find. Another one, every time, same thing. And I found new one recently. Immediate placement, no any reflection, no any thinking, no any biological knowledge. People think bone is a, 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 a wooden part because they are trained on plastic and on pig. So probably they said living bone is the same. No, it's not the same. Living bone is living and biology is the rule. So what we learned from long, 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 long time, we never place one implant in front part like a tooth, never. An, an implant has every time to be more palatal, at least one and a half or better, two millimeter more palatal than the other teeth to give enough space to avoid that the bone evolution that will happen. Remove the bone and you have recession as you have seen on the other case. And not too deep, but deep enough to be under the gingiva. It's a very, it's just think, what is the bone evolution? What is the soft tissue evolution? I adapt. I do not want to change the biology. I follow the biology. So we never place immediately, never. Why? No interest more risky and you lose something that nobody can give to you which is mother nature offer us four to five millimeter of keratinized mucosa to close the socket nobody know today how to use keratinized mucosa so what we do i do not take any care to the time of extraction my only care is I need to have a beautiful soft tissue healing. And I do a very, very, very palatal incision. So I will use my flap as a bone augmentation. We are working this with a model from Professor Ali El Amit from Casablanca. And we are preparing a, a, a publication I'm writing actually. We use nothing, just bone expansion and moving of the mucosal flap. No any material for bone augmentation inside the front part of the maxilla. We place every time palatal. 
we know it could be possible to feel, but it's not necessary to feel because with rough surface that will feel, we just place palatal and we cover. And we succeed to have very, very nice results. Only correctly thinking, knowing, and placing the implant. You see, very nice result, and this allowed to have also very nice result for prosthetic device. We place a lot of implants, and in 40 years of activity inside University of Geneva, I perform one, one, you hear, one soft tissue graft for implants. And every time we have success like this, just because we follow nature and we agree to take advantage of the offer of nature as keratinized mucosa. But people are working every day on bone, on aesthetic, papilla and something. Everything is nature. If you agree to understand and to follow it, you have the good results. And it's very, it's very nice to have it and it's very easy to have it. This, unfortunately, I have not, but you know this case, it was the most difficult case for implant and probably we have to, to look really if, if it's a good indication. It's congenitally a missing lateral incisor, young lady, 17 years, no space anywhere, we place only two implants, not covered, no any soft tissue graft, not anything, result. And this is result after 10 years. And unfortunately, I have not here, and we have the result now 20 years, no change, 20 years, no thing, just drilling, placing, such as the soft tissue, no thing. So the simpler way is giving the more stable and correct results. You will see this every day. Look really, look really. What are thinking people who are doing such things? All this graft, beautiful name. Graft is something done by a surgeon. So I'm a surgeon, I do graft. For what? For no thing. All these grafts are outside of the normal shape of the crest. No one part of the bone outside of the crest will never stay. Never. It's impossible. Because if it was true, you will not have the shape of the maxilla. The shape of the maxilla is done by first shape of and morphology of the face and later muscular function. And if you have space between your teeth, it's because you have pressure from the lip. And what is stopping the pressure from the lip? The roots. What is on the roots? A very small part of bone. As soon as you remove the roots, this part of bone disappears and you can do what you want. You will never put bone outside of the crest. Yan Li Day said it, I think it's quite 50 years ago. Nobody can create bone outside of the crest. Nobody take care to biology. Maybe people are very happy to do graft for no thing. Aggressive, risk for avenic place, risk for safety healing, lift, risk for bone healing, risk of loosening of bone, pain for the patient, uh, scares, interest, zero. Interest, if anybody place this implant inside this bone, implant will be outside after some months. And with bone, it's months. If you put material very low resorption like BIOS, which is a bad material because it do not resort, you can keep some years, but it will resolve with time. But with bone is very fast. So no interest. Look at this. Unfortunately, the quality is not correct. Look where the teeth. Look the CBCT. I do not want CBCT, but the only advantage is to show teeth are not inside the bone. They are outside of the bone. It is impossible to replace a teeth by a tooth by placing an implant in the same place. Impossible. We have to adapt, and to adapt is to place every time more palatal graft or no graft. And do not do graft, there is no any interest. 
I'm preparing the paper and there is no more any interest to do it. Bone graft, a, a, a very huge review from literature from Exposito, he said there is no any indication from bone graft inside oral cavity for implant. You know, it's, it's quite simple. So no any interest. So we can do differently. The teeth are not inside the bone. They are outside and they are covered by a thin layer you cannot keep because it's, it's due to the vascularization from parental ligament. You have no parental ligament on teeth, you will not keep this bone and you will have your implant, as I showed you before, under the, under the mucosa. So, I have done. When I said to you, I have done everything, I have done like any other bone people, I have done. Oh, a, a case with a lot of bone. When I looked to this, I said, but I, I think to nothing. Why to create this amount of bone outside of the place where, where I need it? And it was the, the, the super period of bone regeneration that is crazy, with non resorbable membrane, which was horrible, with a terrible risk of scare of retraction of soft tissue. But when it was working, we were very proud. Look at this. I keep all my bone and all this bone is outside of the crest. Look the thin layer on the teeth. No interest. All my graft is for nothing. I, I just learned and I stopped to do it. Look at this paper and now it's more and more. How many you can lose? You lose why, why people do not see? Because they control when they reopen to place implant after some months, four months, six, five months. Wait one year, two years, and reopen. There is no more anything. No more anything. Bone is lost. It's not lost. The, the nature takes his, his place and, 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 and recreate. And what stops the resorption? The implant. Like in sinus. So we changed long, long time ago. We stopped totally to use bone. We stopped totally to do, to do graft before implant placement. And I said, we place implant where we can, like this. And if we need, just not for implants, because implants inside native bone, just for morphological... <laughs> we put some material, okay? And this, you look at this, we, we have now cases like this, we publish it. We have cases like this, which are more than 20 years. But we publish after nine years, and after nine years, we have perfect result, nothing. Just placing in, this, in native bone is probably more than 10 years, I never have done a, a bo no, bone graft, more than 20 probably, and bone augmentation before placement of implant, probably more than 10 years. And now we continue and we do less and less bone augmentation. What we need to think, just an instrument more to compress bone and expand than remove. And second, small implants. And third, with an interrogative point, perhaps bone substitute, perhaps bone substitute, because now I stop. You know this case, you have not to do X-ray. You, you see it's a defect, okay. What I said to patient, if you want, we can place it. He said, okay, we'll place it. Osteotom technique, placement of implant, filling of the cavity, suture, it's finished. No graft, no waiting time, no sink. And the, the implant is inside the native bone. It's, it's, it's a normal implant. What I do is just to, 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 to compensate the, the concavity. But it could be done with anything, not bone. It could be done fibrous tissue, what you want, connective tissue, what you want. We try to improve it. And uh, osteotomy is a little bit too aggressive. We move to a very soft, it's, it's, the name is soft dilating system. Soft dilating system is something you push and you rotate and you push the bone. So you put your implant inside the bone. And we succeed to do it. This is a paper we published with a group from, uh, from Japan and China. And you see in a very thin crest and in mandible, where it's very difficult, how from a thin crest without doing nothing, you succeed to prepare and to place an implant. And we place material around just to keep a little bit the space, but it's not necessary. And what is the problem with, short, with reduced diameter implant? 
it's never a problem of bone anchorage. We have for years very, very strong studies that show same result. Reduced diameter or normal diameter, same result. We have a result including going to very small implant up to three millimeter. But if you move to three, three to three five millimeter, you know the result are the same than larger implant. The only problem is the risk, mechanical risk of fracture. So to use short implants, we, we prefer to have stronger implants. What is stronger implant on the market today? Most people, most companies, a lot of companies give you what they said, type five titanium. And this is not correct. Type 5 titanium is not titanium. Titanium pure is 1 to 4. And the commercial titanium for implants is type 4. Type 5 is not titanium. It's titanium alloy. And it's alloy with vanadium and aluminium. And now for 10 years, we have a lot of attention from a lot of people working, mainly for neurologic uh, disease, that said there is a risk of to neurotoxicity of metal and mainly from aluminium. So it's not fair to put aluminium inside the body of somebody not giving the information. Look your implant system. Most systems no, stop to say which titanium they use. Before they were explaining, now they do not notice. It's not correct. If it's, they do not notice, it's because they do not want you control. So look, and if you have a commercial guy, ask for him, it's which is your implant? We said it's titanium. Yes, which grade? And if it said it's five, he said, oh, five is not titanium. It's titanium with vanadium. And vanadium is not a very nice metal. And aluminium, which is not a nice metal. So take care. But most of you are using grade five. Perhaps they do not know. And never you, ex you inform your patient. And that is not fair. You have to inform your patient. I put something with aluminium. You have people who refuse to have vaccine because in some vaccines there is aluminium and they said, I do not want aluminium and they do not take vaccine. And you put them aluminium in their body without giving information. It's not correct. So take care. What is the solution? Strong implant, no toxicity. The, the best, a, a good solution is rock solid. Rock solid is alloy, but it's titanium and zirconia. So it's non-aggressive material. It's biocompatible material. So it's correct. However, you have to choose strama because it's only strama. And you have to decide to pay for strama, which is high cost implant system. There is a very good solution, which exists for years. And very, very limited company take care. In grade four titanium, you have two grade uh, four titanium. You have grade A, which is the grade which is used in most implants and the titanium bear is prepared by uh, with all hot temperature and you have titanium which is said grade 4b which is cold worker or hard titanium which is prepared by cold elongation of the titanium to do the bar and this cold titanium is giving a resistance which is approximately grade 5 and someone are better than grade five. So you can have a pure titanium with the strength of a non very, uh, very safe alloy of uh, titanium and, uh, and vanadium. And a lot of studies are done. Every paper you take now on a new alloy or on grade four, people said to avoid the potential toxicity of aluminium. It's not a, a huge proof. If it was a huge proof, it was forbidden to continue to use. But you know what happened with tabac, with tobacco, people continue to use, with amiant, or people continue to use with a lot of, so uh, we, we need some time. But for safety, it's better not to use grade five titanium and to stay on pure grade four B titanium. And you see, if you are seen crest, this is a patient who do not want to have bone graft. And you said, OK, we'll just do a bone uh, expansion. We place the implant in her bone. We just put some material. At this time, it was BIOS, but we stopped to use BIOS and membrane. We stopped to use membrane also. And you see very nice results. No local anesthesia, no general anesthesia, no bone harvesting, nothing. Only one surgery, placement of implant by expansion in native bone, 
and uh, augmentation of the volume of just for for the aspect with a bone substitute but we continue to move also a seen crest young patient we are, do not very happy to have bone graft bone expansion with the sds system and we use only a bone substitute inside collagen without membrane which was we do every day now up maxilla mandible stem sink expansion small implant and it's become very simple so we can succeed now to place implant inside no very high of bone no very high width of bone bad crown to implant ratio and we are very confident because we have scientific data that said short implants work perfectly reduced diameter implant works perfectly bad crown to implant ratio is better so why to do complex things we stop totally to do complex things and we find the compromise that correspond to the need of the patient that is smarter medicine that is smarter implant concept you know it's a global things and what we know now we know now that this bone expansion gives the, the same result that a graft so no interest to continue to the graft so only one stage simple technique no aggressivity no pain no huge problem easier things and we have a lot a lot of review on, on narrow diameter implants that correspond today to say we can use it in in a lot of uh, in every situation so what is the the, the 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 most important conclusion what is doing every day every people placing implant and i've done it for years you do your x-ray and you measure okay have I will say 14 millimeter. Okay, I put a 12 millimeter implant. I'm very happy. I keep my two millimeter of safety. It's super. Another case, I measure I have only 12. I put a, a 10 millimeter implant. Very safe. It works perfectly. Oh, it's a little bit shorter. I, I will place a shorter implant, eight millimeter. And I reduce. And I go to, and I reduce time after time. Okay. But if you look like this, and you remove the first one, are you afraid by the eight millimeter? No. You have your experience. I have my experience. And I have a terrible literature. I have a very, very strong literature. No difference. So what is the easiest? shift in paradigm the easier i have a small amount of bone i put eight i have more i put eight i have more i put eight i have what you want i put f every time if i'm safe with eight in reduced bone i'm as safe with eight in large amount of bone and i know there is no scientific difference and no, my bad crown to implant ratio will be better to keep the bone. So not only it is possible, it is a good way to do it. And I would like to say to you something. Today, we have the same evidence for six millimeter implant. So normally I have to, to shift to six and to place only six and every time six, every location six. That changes your life. You do not lose time to control and to measure, you said, okay, I have enough to place six or eight a place. You do not have to, you, you do a shorter time. You, you, you risk of, of overeating is lower. You have a, a bad crown to implant ratio is super. So why to take any time to think? How, I think in some diploma people take bone uh, radio analysis to, to, to implant dimension. It's crazy. I just look something, can I place six? Yes, I can, so I place. Or can I place eight? Yes, I can, I place, and it's finished. Every case, every situation, every, everywhere. And the second part is the same for, for diameter. Why? Hist historically, we had regular implant, and regular implant was done to do regular crown. 
and after we receive smaller implant, narrow implant to do small crown. And later we, we receive wide implant to do large crown. So we have to place implant depending from the shape of the crown. What is the change? The change is platform switching. Platform switching has a very limited interest for bone conservation because it's quite nothing. But it has a strong interest because the, the crown is not depending from the implant. You can put on an implant a, 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 a prosthetic device from different diameter. So you can adapt only to bone. And what have people are doing? Have a reduced amount of bone and put a, radius, <laughs> and put a small implant, habitually it's front part. Have more bone, I put a four millimeter implant. I have very large bone, I will do a molar, I put a five millimeter implant. They do not take advantage of the knowledge. Because if you have a good material, great for B or rock solid, you have an implant with platform switching. What you can do? Have a steel crest, I place 3.5, including for premolar units because it works perfectly and the only situation where you place a larger implant is for, for molar crown not molar situation molar crown because the risk is the mechanical strength of the connection but you can you, you see i have, have only two implants i have a 3.5 by 8 and a 4 by 8 only two implants and if you have a very good system if you have a very good system, which is a system with you have pure grad cat B titanium and high strength connection, and the system is tested to resist to quite molar loading, I place my reduced diameter implant, which is not three, which is 3.5, not 3.3, 3.3, I do not know, but 3.5, I know system. I've only one implant, which is eight millimeter and 3.5 diameter. Only one implant. No problem of stock, no problem of decision of which implant I use today. Only one implant. I, it's my dream for 30 years. And now I am. Now I have a system I can use only one. I can use two because I have six and eight. But normally, I hope in one or two years, I will say you, I just use six by 3.5. That will be super. But actually most systems do not produce six by 3.5. So I'm reduced to eight by 3.5. But that changed totally life. Not looking which implant I will use depending from the bone. I place my, my main plant non-depending from the bone and in position non-depending from the bone, only prosthetic position. So you can understand, it's a lot of things. Everything is evidence-based. Everything you have the scientific knowledge that allow you to do it. If you want, I will do presentation later uh, with more time on each topic. And I give all the, the, the data from the literature. I will just produce it now for the paper for 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 eight for with of the crest. It's 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 terribly strong. So what we have now, we have now the way to good to decide what is a good implant, what is the evidence based implant from this year. Because how to choose an implant system? You have you have hundreds of implant system now. So if you want to be in the evidence based knowledge. You can adapt your choice. What is a good implant? It's a conical cylinder screw shape because it's better to have a screw and a little bit conical give a better stability. There are data from, from sense. Pure titanium, a lot of data, a lot of data. Pure titanium is better for the surface of the treatment, uh, treatment of the surface. It's better for, for, for cell opposition. It's okay. But Reinforced titanium. And so reinforced titanium, great for, is not as safe on the risk of toxicity, and it's not as good for the bone to implant contact. So it's, it's second choice, it works. It works, it's not forbidden, it's, 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 it's accessible. But if you have the choice, 
it's better to move outside from grade five. You need to have a strong, so the best probability today is great for B or hard or cold, and some system began to do it. You have to have a good micro rough surface. Probably there are differences, but on a clinical point of view, we have no knowledge to say this one. Every company will say my surface is better or my new surface is better. It's very easy to, to say. Most studies are after four weeks, no interest of four weeks. We need interest at the time of OCE integration, which is at least six weeks and for a long time. And what is done on new surface actually, it's four weeks is a little bit better, but after eight is the same. So no interest. Uh, you need to have an internal connection because it's not possible to, 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 to do what I show you if you have not an internal. You need to have a conical and you need to have a good conical strong and very, very stable, because this allow to have less risk with cantilever, less risk of bone loosening at the crystal level. So the strength of the connection is very important. And if you have a very good connection, you can put a quite large crown on a small implant. You need to have the platform switching to be able to press crown, not depending from the implant the surface. The good connection. You need better not to have sharp apex because to do sinus elevation is better to have a soft apex of the implant. You need to have reduced dimension and it's very good to have six millimeter implant. And if you have a system with four, it's very, it's very uh, nice to have a, a four implant on system. You need to have a good surgical kit. Nobody take care to surgical kit. A good surgical kit has good instrument, good lungs, gauge, to be able to place correctly clinically guided implant placement. And you need, if possible, to have a good quality production, which is not so difficult, but it's true that there is some company who are working for years and everybody knows their quality of production, but there is so much progress in, in most companies that this is quite not, not so difficult. So you know, you can decide to have scientific criteria to choose an, an implant system. And at the end, when you have all the list, if you have able to say, okay, I have the, all the characteristics, add, add one, if possible, optimal cost. Implant parts are mainly too expensive today. They could be much more lower, but probably the pressure, the concurrence will that will diminue with time, but up to now, not too much. So if you find, I do not say low cost, because low cost is just people attract you and say, oh, my implant is uh, $50, okay. But they sell the prosthetic part very expensive. It's optimal cost. It's a system which is planned to say, okay, it's a good system. It's normal to have a price, but this price will be fair. Fair price, fair optimal cost. This is the good way to do it. So I hope it was not too, uh, too difficult for you. I know it's probably surprising. Uh, I, I, I hope you can understand it's a global approach. I have no any interest for such techniques, such things, such a, that change nothing. What is important is a global approach. If you decide implant is a good system, is a good treatment. I want to offer it to all of my patients. Any dentist, any dentist can do it after some weeks of uh, information and training because it is a philosophy. And as soon you understand and you follow the philosophy, it's finished. As soon you, and you have just to close eyes, air and mind, and to stop to look and hear what you hear every day, where every people are very, very sure that what they said is, is the truth. It's, it's frequently not. I do not want, it's never true, but it's, it's frequently not. Because it's very rare to have a people who are able to take all the system because nobody took care for this. Nobody is thinking 
the smarter medicine philosophy to move outside for I'm proud to have technique and material and to move to have I want to give a service to my patient. I want to do medicine. I want to stop to do commercial dental activity. And I know it's, uh, it's not evident. I just want to show you patient now know we have to take care. Some colleagues propose treatments that are not very nice for us. So people begin to, to feel it. So it's, it's important to change. This way, you can do it. Any dentist can do it tomorrow morning, any patient. It's just to change philosophy. And you have seen, we have result, which is at least the result that everybody can have. Because in implants, everybody agree, the success rate is more than 90% of success after 20 years quite every, every implant system. So you, we have a, a very, very, very good margin. So if you do it like this, you change totally the history and you change totally your philosophy and you change totally your activity. And this is what I have done for years in Geneva. And the only way to train it and to show it is not to do lecture. Lecture is just to open mind. It's just to show to colleagues how we do and how it works. And this is the clinical implant training concept. It's what I do in Geneva for years. We, we, we teach people, helping them to treat their own patient. And after some time, everybody is working very nicely and placing implant every day. And very simply and like this. So you see, to think it's necessary to do something else, it's just not to know everything. So it's an effort. Every day I learn new things. And I hope to continue for some days to continue to learn and to, 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 to learn new things. It's every day if you take care, if you look. And I hope some of you will say in six months, hey, you can also change this. It's easier to do like this. I will be very happy. Any young people who show me something new, I'm very happy to follow them. So this is the message. I know it's difficult. I know it's coming from a, from a very small part uh, close to, to Switzerland. Uh, but you have to understand it's why I really want to thank uh, Dr. Vassen to, to allow me to do this. I do not want to be uh, in a part of a Congress or something like this. It's just fighting with colleagues who are very, very sure they do the best. I just want to open you your mind if you are interested, you can do yourself or you can do with, with support. And I will very, very, very be happy to, to give any support. I do not want to do it. I'm not able to do it. I'm not able to come, to come every week in your country, but it's very easy to do it with, with local colleagues. If my support is interesting, I will be very happy. But you can understand it's impossible to mix this with any actual conference presentation of implant, I know it's too far from what is said by any people. And I know it's difficult. I want to hurt nobody. I just said, look at this. I've done like you, a change. All bad things I have done. I begin dressed like a true surgeon. I'm a true surgeon. I've done orthopedic surgery. I've done cardiac surgery. I've done maxillofacial surgery. I know to dress in a, in a surgical room. I know to work in a surgical room. I've never seen a dentist able to do it. Never. Never. No one. And I take parry and I, I win every time. Five minutes. Picture superb. And picture top. and video. Okay. So do not lost money and time to to dress. Oh, I, oh, I said fireman is nice. Okay, sorry, but I cannot say something else. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I hope some, some of you resist. <laughs> I agree with you completely that it is uh, very surprising and uh, it is something new. Uh, and thank you so much that uh, the, this is something that I have to uh, like put so many lines under is uh, all this researches that you have done and every research and every slide and everything that you are talking about 
you are giving us the references and this is something that is rarely used in lectures and in conferences like you do and that's why i was insisting that to invite you to introduce to us what's uh, the concept or uh, what is the philosophy let's say it, it's we can say it's a philosophy because it's a new philosophy for uh, i think a lot of uh, people who are following us right now but uh, when i tell uh, or or i speak about my experience about this and especially with the 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 length and the diameter that you were talking about uh that it is 3.5 times 8 or yes. you are reaching to 3.5 times 6 and there you don't have to have a stock with the no you do something you have no, this is you, something and and with all these um research you, you you point a very very important topic today it's depending from countries but most implant system do not agree to let implant for free as deposit so people do not want to pay to have a stock and they measure at the last time and they order implant by implant to do the surgery it's it's a terrible stress mm -hmm. if you said i use only every time the same implant you have two or three or, or 10 if you place more, or 50 if you place implant every day, and you are very safe. You said, okay, this is for you, it's easier. But you have to understand also for companies, it will be a huge advantage. Because if you produce only one or two parts in a huge number, yes. the price will be much more lower. Yes. What is very expensive today is the catalog. <laughs> to have so many, so many parts, and you know, to produce, it's expensive. But as producers are not in the country, to import is terrible. An importer has to buy a lot of parts. It's very expensive. And perhaps some of them he will never sell. But he needs to have them. Because if a customer, he sees a catalog, he said, I want this one. And he has no. The customer will say, it's not a, a, a good importer. I have to change. Mm -hmm. So it's a or the, the number of parts is a horrible cost. Yes. And we have now the data to say it's not necessary. And probably it's something, you know, I, I plan and I project for years, but time gives a result days after days. And now we know it's possible and it's probably better, which is every people were thinking the opposite. And now we see it's probably better. It's and why I, I want really to thank you because I, I, I explain you uh, it's something different and it's, that has to be yes. okay. Mm -hmm. And you agree to do it. And no, there is not a lot of people who agree to do it. So really, I want to thank you. Yeah. But I, I just want to, to, to explain to you that nobody could be a shock or something like this. It's not yesterday morning, I wake up and I said, okay, now we do the revolution. Yeah. It's 40 years of small step, small step, small step, small step, small step, small step. At the beginning, I, I work in exactly as people said, you have to work like this. And I've, doing it. I've done it. And I've done everything. And after time, I said, okay, is it really necessary to do like this? We try to change. And, and with good, good support to say, no, it's not too risky. Two, three case, pilot, yes, it works. Immediately, we begin a study. And like this, we, it's just, it, it's why it's important for me, because it's just to give something I put 40 years to build. Yes. So it's a result of 40 years of looking, thinking, testing uh, every, every day. And today I'm here. I hope if, if, uh, if God is, is nice with me, I hope in two years that to you now, I, I use only six. But up to now, I cannot say, I said, I expect to, but I will no, never say it because I, 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 I do not have done it. I do not have done you it. I, have I try, of research, but up to now, I've not done it. I have, I've, you know, we can continue to, to cross step every day. If you want to do it, you can continue to cross step every day and to, to change. This is 
I think this is a normal uh, human advantage. We have a system that allows to think, to analyze, to create, to uh, and to test. So we have we have nature gave us the, the instrument. So we have just to use it, and and if you do it slowly and you control, you are very very you you do not take risk because you do it day by day, one case two case. I've, I've done every time I, I began like this. First system of augmentation I, I've done in case I do not need. I just want, oh, how works this material? I just place it, I do not need. If it does not work, the patient take any risk. And you learn, so what is brutal? It's because it's, a, it's today a result of 30 years of preparation. So it's, it's, it's aggressive uh, on, on, one, on one shot. But if you understand, uh, two years ago, I was a little bit step lower. Uh, five years ago, I was lower. Ten years ago, I was lower. It's, it's progressive. Yes, it is. Uh, I, I, the philosophy is the goal. The road is the same. There is a the, the, the safety, the safety come with time. And not only for me, the safety come from other people working and doing studies. A lot. That's it. That, that's the question that I want to ask you uh, right now, actually. And we have uh, colleagues uh, with us that are <coughs> very eminent researchers. And this is a, a very uh, unusual question. What kind of study you want to do f for now on the implants that would make you say, OK, I will use the 6, 3.5? You know, first thing, my first thing is to, uh, to study on this topic. Mm. Because I do it. I have my indirect proof because I put all my results in a database and I can explain to you how many eight millimeter implant I place and which success rate I have with time. Okay. And I have the literature. However, to move to uh, only one dimension, mm -hmm. any location, up to now, Personally, I've done. I'm not sure, well, colleagues working close from me, and mm -hmm. you know, we discuss a training system. I have a training program working in Algeria. My friend in Algeria is doing like me. He do not place longer than eight millimeter now for at least three or four years. Okay. okay. But I would like now to have a, a, a quite uh, a homogeneous group, but but with different clinics mm -hmm. to be able, we do the same thing and we analyze results. Because if you, as I show, if you have several groups working, your, your proof is stronger. Of so multi-group study is better. It's, it's difficult to organize. It's difficult to, 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 to conduct. Because um, yes, 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 it's, it's I, I, time consuming to keep data. You know, it's an effort. So you can do it only with people who said yes, I'm really interested, and I agree to do this effort. And yes, a lot of I'm people really interested, and I agree to do this effort. And I think so, uh, with so for this to, to be able to say okay, we we have taken the decision on scientific basis to say now we have data that allow to use only one dimension of implant in all this indication. This was a, a very good study. You have, you have two problems you have seen in my study for sinus elevation uh, without material. What, what we need? Uh, we need first uh, the capacity to control. We have done it only when was with one group because it was easy, because we had direct control. As soon as you enlarge, it's a little bit more difficult. And second, we need time. So what you can do in such a, a way, you can produce immediately, and now it's possible, you can produce immediately the, the, the reflection, the scientific basis, and the protocol. 
good review, agree actually to have a presentation of uh, 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 reflection with scientific basis and to say, and to this, to control this, we will do such protocol. So this could be done immediately. After, as we have done for Sinus, you can publish after one year of uh, loading. Nobody agreed to take you uh, some data less than one year after loading. Okay, one so year. you have to wait at one least one year. Implant or after processes? Well, or the bet is better after loading of processes. One it's year after loading, loading of processes. Part, yeah. If you had done it like this, you, you can, and we have done it, you can give some guarantee if you publish after three years. And review, good review, agree. A good proto original protocol, publish in their review, after one year, they agree to, to take three years. But the true result is five years. After five years, I am very happy to say now we are 10, but we were knowing that we'll not move from uh, five to 10. Habitually, actually, people agree, long-term result for implant at five years. But you know, it's very time consuming. And for me, five years begin to be a long time. <laughs> yeah. But you still, but, but, but you do have so you, uh, the, so you the, database, uh, the, the database for the eight, uh, 3.5 and 8. Yes. You have the database for the 3.5, uh, 8. Have the database to, 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 to have the data, but not that to that would be, uh, uh, not produce the data. Sure we, can, we can. You know, because I know the material. I was working mainly with Stroman implant. Yes. And, and Stroman implant, the, the difference is their implant is smaller. It is 3.3. And 3.3 for, for, for limited width is nice. However, on the 3.3, they have some specific prosthetic parts. And you cannot use it exactly as a, a, a classic implant. So now you have some companies that produce implants that are able to uh, have a, a little bit larger, around 3.5, but you can have the same abutment than other implants. So you can use it any location. So it's, it's probably uh, because we do not add up to now the material, it was not able to, I was not able to, to do it. But the second thing, which could be much, much more uh, interesting uh, and, and fast. And, and, and I like fast things uh, as studies. It is to try to analyze the result of new users working following this philosophy after the specific training. Because some studies like this like they exist. And they show that habitually, uh, if you have, you gave a good training, after a short period, new user can reach very, very good success rate. And this, I will be very happy to do it as soon you will produce new uh, users following this global philosophy. And this, you know, this will be. Who can see us? Who can uh, understand? In, in this field, in this field, you have just to uh, to uh, wait to have at least uh, also integration success. So it's very short because uh, you can have. Uh, it, it's, it's depending how many people work and participate, but you can have result of OCI integration which are uh, after three months of placement. So it is very, it's very short. So if you said, okay, we begin, people begin to work in uh, first January next year, uh, after uh, in June, you have data to produce something. How would we be evaluating the, the, the osteo integration after three months in the patient? How would you- recommend? Classic, classic osteo integration uh, success measurement, which is no, no mobility and uh, uh, no complication and uh, no radiolucency, basic, the basic. basic, yes. Uh, so no, no radiolucency, so it you know, followed by, you know, by x-ray? With, with a group of new users, 
considering I've, I've produced a, 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 a large number of, of new users, but I know from them they have no problem in their work because frequently they ask for me for uh, uh, an information for a new case or a little bit more complex. So I stay in contact with them, but I've never done a precise uh, data uh, collection uh, to, to, to do to do sync on it. So it will be very easy to do it with a lot of things done by new users. And if you look actually uh, some part of the literature, there is two parts that I'm interested in that are taking some, some place and are uh, accepted in review and, and uh, because it's interesting. It's difficult to produce new sync every time in a, in a field that is working for 40 years. Two things begin to be uh, attractive. It's the feeling from the patient, analysis of which patient, uh, the, the term is uh, outcome measure or something like this. You, we can we begin to have a lot of, of, of publication on this. And I think it is interesting not to move from, only from the evaluation of the, of, the, of the professional, but also feeling of the patient. This is one That's part. And the second part is interest for uh, training to, of general dentists. And you have a lot of group, including university group, including university groups that never train their, their, their students, that begin to take interest. I've, I've, I found three or four papers last week looking for some other things where people explain it will be interesting how to do it. So I think to, pro to, to produce data by new users trained by a specific training system, I know some studies on this, uh, that will be something that could be uh, a, a good, for me, interesting, because that proves that works. And second, it will be uh, not to wait too long to publish. So you said with a group like this, you can begin clinical studies that will need years to, to publish data, but also some simple things that could be analyzed, analyzed soon after implant placement, and that will be published sooner. Because a clinical study, if you, I do not know, is depending from country. But a clinical study actually in Switzerland or in France with normal patient, with normal treatment, not, not experimental things, not new material, you need to have a, a notarization with an ethical committee. And there is now in France and Switzerland, ethical committee for uh, outside of hospital, because inside hospital, habitually we have, uh, ethical committee, we, we but outside, committee. outside of hospital. So if you need, if you want to do, I, I will do a study with, with dentists working in the clinic, which is now my, my normal way. Before I was university working, now I'm more working with private colleagues working in the clinic. So you need first to do the protocol with a good scientific analysis. Second, you need to to put them in such a ethical committee. Habitually, it works because it's not original. You have a good scientific support, it works. But it takes two or three months. And after you begin, if you are honest, you begin to do and to collect data only when you have the stamp. Frequently, we begin a little bit better. <laughs> no, we, we, we do have the local ethics committee, but it does not take all that much time. And actually, I was going to ask you about uh, one of the issues that we interrupted in with uh, uh, working the 2056 cases of implant uh, in, uh, in, in a septic condition or without sterilization. And I, I was going to ask about how the local ethics committee approved the publication in the first place. And I'm sorry to say that, but I think it would be a question for me here. You know, you know, these things are moving also year after year. At the beginning of implant treatment, we had nothing to ask to nobody. 
Why now we have to do it? It is because it is recommended by a regulation system and ethical committee. And the however, of the coronavirus. however, when when you do, I, I got a problem with thesis in, in University of Geneva. When you do uh, a normal activity, you do normal activity, and you just want to analyze your normal activity. It's impossible to ask to patient you, you treated 10 years ago. So what, we've, what we have done inside University of Geneva after some time when we have seen when people uh, inside the university was agreeing the treatment planning and singing the, 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 the plan uh, money uh, to pay, we had a line uh, inside the university, some data concerning your treatment could be uh, used, uh, but totally anonymous and, and people were singing. So later, when ethical committee said, you cannot, says, said, yes, patients agree to do it. We do not say, I will look your length or your implant or your premolar or your lateral incisor. They just think we agree because it was not only me, it was also from perio department, it was also for uh, cario department and a lot of things like this. We, we, we explain to patient, uh, we, we give you, it was not, uh, we, we do not really ask. We said inside the university, we could use your data co coming from your treatment for, for teaching or something like this. And in, in university, most patients are quite proud to say, yes, what I do is used for students and something like this. It was quite easy. But with times, it become more and more uh, difficult. So I have a database. And uh, uh, we succeeded in this database to give to uh, the, the patient, every, any patient as a number. So we can analyze the data without knowing the name of the patient. And, and like this, I succeeded to have the agreement from a thesis inside, inside the university where people said to me, yes, but uh, I said, okay, but look, never one patient uh, appear. I do not know. Nobody can know which patient it is. It's just an analysis of a, a, of a situation. And like this, they agree. But every six months, year or two years, it's a little bit more... At the beginning of ethical committee, we have an ethical committee inside quite the school. They meet every week. You give a paper, two days later, it was seen, it was finished. Now they, they, they have done a structure. All departments from all the faculty of medicine give to the same structure. So you have something for cardio, something from, most people do not know what they are speaking about. It's, but you, you, and why we have to do it now? Not only for them, because for them, but in a good review, if you have no the agreement of the ethical committee, they do not take your text. Of course. So to publish, we need to have it. And, and it's much for this we do it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because a, a good review, that I get, but this is a prospective study, which ethical committee gave you the I remember about 17 years ago, uh, it was in 2004, and I was doing my uh, research uh, with the Hong Kong University, and still it was not yet established, the, ethic, the local ethics committee, but I had to get an approval of the local ethics committee and uh, to be able to publish it. And I got it from Hong Kong University. <laughs> so I got the approval of Hong Kong yeah. University uh, local ethics committee at that time, uh, but now we're well established. We have a well established local ethics committee here, and uh, you know, it, it, it's quite not. It's quite non correct. All these things are coming from quite normal things to say. Okay, we cannot agree. Anybody decide alone to do something which could be strange. Okay, and this is quite correct. But at this time, you have just to put something which is just to look, it's not a crazy thing. And at this time, it's perfect. 
but now it's detail, 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 and it's, it's uh, becoming crazy. It's becoming crazy because it was necessary to not to allow anything. It's totally crazy to control any stupid things. And I hope as you, as you put people in a committee, with they them. want to do with their the job. Company, they want to say, yes, I do something. They ask something. You will never see nobody ever. Before people said, okay, it's okay. Now that never exists. It's, every people want to say, okay, I'm, I'm inside. I have to ask some, something. Mm -hmm. So they ask something. You, you answer. They do not read immediately. They do not answer immediately. And you take six months to have a simple things. No, I think when we do uh, th this this uh, work uh, together here, we will not take six months to take the local ethics committee approval. But I'm, uh, I'm sure that can, in uh, this arrange. field, there are some things that could be published. Yes. There are interesting things that could be published. Yes. Uh, I hope that we can have, uh, we will uh, discuss this uh, after this. And thank you so much. You know, I you know, know be, uh, Basen, also, uh, for me, for me I'm very, very happy. I was afraid yesterday not to be able to 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 do because I, I I know you have done for me a lot of of effort and I want really to thank you. Uh, thank my you. No, my thank only you. You so demand much. my only demand was I would like to give to you and to all colleagues who could be interested something which is a general global thing. Now you have it. If you need details, every details are, are ready when you want. And the, the decision and the choice is in your side. If you said, yes, we are interested. Yes, it's something that could be interesting in your country. Yes, it's something that could help some colleagues in your country. I'm sure you can do it perfectly alone. If you said, we would like to do, as long as I'm able to, to speak, because now it's only <laughs> to speak, as long as I'm able to speak, I, I will be happy to, 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 to do it for you. But well, my, my main demand was, I will have no enough time now to waste my time to be in conventional things I know for years and I stop to use for years. And I do not want to fight with colleagues. Every, everybody is quite free. Uh, Okay, but I, I cannot personally agree to, to, to have people who said something, I know it's not true, I, 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 it's not the actual knowledge, I will do it. But I do not want to push or to say to do like this. I just said, okay, looking what exists, looking the literature, looking your study, looking your patient, today I'm at this situation. But what I find strange, people in 2021 are in the same situation that in 1981. It was normal to be inside at 1981, but it's not normal not to take attention of 40 years of progression of knowledge. And the problem with implants, which is, there is a lot of explanation, it's much more stay at the initial level. And uh, it works. I, 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 and I it works. The initial level is giving 90% of success after 20 years. So the, the difference is only we can have the same success simpler. It's only, it works. There is no any problem. It's not, oh no, you are, you are in a worse, it's terrible thing. No. The, I show you the study from the, the Swedish group, 99% in full endotelous patients. So it works. It was the Brandmark system. It was a, a, a smooth surface titanium. It was the octagonal uh, connection, 99%. <laughs> so it's possible to continue. It's, it's not forbidden to continue. It's possible to continue. The choice is, is it, is, is there an interest for me or mainly for my patient to change? Personally, I think it's better to change, but it's, this is my opinion. And I do not, I do not say it's better. 
for Bond at the crystal level, this was a surprise, it's better. <laughs> and it was terribly a surprise. Yes. You know? There was a lot of surprises today. When the colleague, when the colleague, when the colleague shows us the data with Professor Belzer. Yes, of course. Uh, as it is very, very small dimension. As it was a retrospective study, non perfectly uh, comparable X rays. We said, okay, there is no difference. We are very happy. But we were not strong enough to say it's better. And it's other group that go far farther than us and said, no, it is better. But from the beginning, we were knowing it's better. But we, 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 we do not feel the, our study is strong enough to say it is better. But it is. No more sound. Yeah, we will have a lot to discuss about the studies. And thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. No, so thank you to you. Today. Really, you, you, you know, I, I, I know now you know, because we discuss a lot. I say only what I think. And if I said to you, it's me who have to thank you, it's, it's a reality. Because I know, as for you, something which is not easy. And no, everybody agree to do it like this. So really, for me, I really want to thank you. And anything you would like to have, I will be very happy to give you what you need, like only something. what you need. Like my patient, know what I want, what you need. <laughs> yes. The philosophy is the same. Uh, we would need to uh, to uh, start uh, talking about the protocol of uh, the new uh, researches that we are going to uh, work on, and of course in, we would. In, in, uh, any uh, any support in any support you feel nice for you will be a pleasure for me. Thank you so much. Thank you so and much. Thank, thank you, you so much, colleagues. I hope they, they, they took something. I, know, I do not know how many people could profit, but uh, it was very nice to do it for you. Thank you so much. And I hope we will. I hope, I hope to, to meet soon. Now we know how to do with Zoom. And super, you, you control this perfectly. For me, I'm, for this, I'm really a beginner. I have to learn a lot. <laughs> we, will, we will learn together. I'm, 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 I'm just a freshman as well. <laughs> you, you seem so to manage very correctly. Bye well, bye. Good evening. And good evening to our friends and colleagues. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. I stop partage. Okay. So